Hello, welcome to Flute Tube. Today we're going to talk about single tonguing and you'd think that this is a pretty simple topic. If you pick up any flute method book that's geared towards a beginning student, somewhere right in the front of the book, it will tell the student to say tu, probably T-U, and that's exactly what you do for the majority of your single tonguing. So you'd think we could maybe just say that and leave it there. And in some ways it really is that simple. When you say tu, the very tip of your tongue hits right behind your front teeth, either where the teeth and the gums meet, that line right there, or just the tiniest bit behind that. And that's exactly where we want your tongue to be most of the time. So it seems pretty simple. It becomes more complicated fairly quickly. There are different ways that you can tongue besides just the two syllable. But really, the main reason that this becomes complicated quickly is that our tongues are such a mystery to us as human beings. We end up doing all kinds of things that are not saying to, even when we think that we are. Hopefully this episode will be enlightening to anybody who's struggling a bit with their articulation and what they want it to sound and feel like, but this should also be helpful to teachers, especially if you have students and they tongue and you think, what are you doing? I don't believe you're actually tonguing really with the tip of your tongue right behind your front teeth. So if you're excited to hear more and think more about how to tongue and teach tonguing, like this video, consider subscribing, leave questions if you have any or ideas for other people in the comments, etc., etc., etc. To drive home the idea of why it's insufficient to just tell a student to tongue by saying two and leave it at that and never revisit it, I'm going to tell you my own story about learning to articulate. My first flute teacher's name was Stephanie. She was a friend of my sister's and she was principal flute of the Bountiful High School Band. Our first lesson, as I mentioned in the last episode, she took me outside and she had me spit rice and that was with the purpose of showing me how to begin articulating. And then she did tell me to articulate by saying two. And because she told me to do that and because I had found where the tip of my tongue is and everything, I believed I was saying two when I was tonguing and she never said anything else about it to me. Well, I was a very serious flutist from the beginning. I was a very hardworking student. And after a year of studying with Stephanie, she and I were kind of playing the same music. So my parents found the best teacher that they could for me. And I transferred over to this teacher whose name was Marsha and she was in the Utah Symphony. And she told me at our first lesson, oh no, you're tonguing in front of your teeth all the time. We have to move the tip of your tongue back inside your mouth, back behind your front teeth. It's more efficient. It's easier to get a good, strong, clear articulation. You're going to hate this. It's so hard to make a change like this. It's going to take you forever, but you have to just be patient and do it. Well, I wanted to impress this teacher and I wanted to show her that I could work hard. So all week long, no matter where I was, I practiced tonguing. I practiced saying ta 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 behind my teeth. And at the next lesson, she said, I can't believe it. You moved your tongue behind your teeth. That's amazing. You fixed it. So I figured that my tonguing was fixed. And then she never said anything else about it to me again. Well, I played in a master class a year or two later, and the teacher in the master class told me, do you realize I can hear that your tongue is kind of moving, but I'm not hearing a clear articulation. And I thought, oh dear, my tongue is behind my teeth. What's going on? I decided that what I needed to do to help people hear my articulation better was to tongue harder. So I started to do ta, ta, ta a lot harder inside my mouth. But then when I was 15, during the summers, I started to study with someone named Joan Bauman. Joan lived in Paris, but her family lived pretty close to me and she would come home for the summers. So there were a couple of summers that I studied with her and Joan had attended the Paris Conservatory. She had been a student of Michelle de Beaust. So she was my first really great link to the French flute school of playing. Joan had me reconsider several aspects of my technique, and one aspect was my tongue placement. She asked me where I was tonguing, and I realized that I was actually tonguing fairly far back in my mouth. 
So we coaxed my tongue forward. I think what happened is that when I was told that I should not be tonguing out in front of my teeth, I overcompensated. I put my tongue behind my teeth, but pretty far back. I moved it forward until I was tonguing right behind my teeth as though I was saying two. What do you know? Two, 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 two. And then I had some epiphanies about tonguing. I realized that really you should never think of tonguing hard. If your tongue placement is right, the articulation will be clear and easy to hear. If your articulation is too far away from where your airstream is going to break on this far side of your embouchure hole on the riser there, then we just won't hear your articulation clearly. And then the other thing that you need in order to have a really clear articulation is that your tongue needs to seal. It needs to seal usually against the roof of your mouth. And then when that seal breaks, that's when we hear the articulation. So it's probably going to seal for just the tiniest fraction of a second. If it does not seal completely, we won't hear your articulation well. And also if your tongue is too far back in your mouth, we won't hear it well because the air still has a long way to travel before it will get to this embouchure hole. Sometimes people will tongue out in front of their teeth on purpose and that's not wrong and bad, but you want to choose carefully when you do it and how. Because if you start a phrase that way, you have plenty of time to set things up then you withdraw your tongue and you get a great articulation. You get a very clear pingy articulation. But if you're doing that constantly, I am exaggerating, but it's much harder to be clear and present with your articulation. It's harder to get a nice seal with your tongue. And furthermore, if you keep doing that, you're disrupting your embouchure a little bit. Your lips are involved. And ideally, you want your tonguing to be quick and efficient. You want as little as possible to move with your setup. And so if your tongue is behind your teeth, the setup is not changing very much at all. You're just raising and lowering the tip of your tongue a little bit. Another big problem with tonguing in front of your teeth all the time comes when you start to double tongue because the less of your tongue you use when you double tongue, the quicker you can be. Because if you say ta ka, you're using a large portion of your tongue, ta ka. You have to move that whole portion of your tongue to do double tonguing. Ta ka, ta ka, ta ka, ta ka. It's quite awkward. If you put the ta behind your teeth, ta, it's suddenly much easier. Ta ka, ta ka, ta ka, ta ka. If you say daga, 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 that's suddenly much easier again to go fast. So you must think about what syllables you're using and be very intentional about why and what you're gaining from those syllables. Now, is anyone confused that here I am talking about a teacher who came straight from the French School of Flute Playing? She had attended the Paris Conservatory, and yet she was telling me as a default to tongue right behind my teeth. I ask because there are a fair number of people in the world who tongue as a default in front of their teeth. Tu, 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 tu. And the reason they usually say that they do that is because that's how it's taught in the French school of flute playing. And if you're thinking, why do we even care about the French school of flute playing? Why does it matter what they do? Then you have to go back and watch my episode three of Flute Tube. Many of the known and recognized best flutists in the world continue to come from the Paris Conservatory like Ron Paul, Galway, Pahoud. So I can tell you what I myself learned from the French School of Flute Playing because I started by studying with students of Michel Dubost and Jean-Pierre Ron Paul. And then I studied with Michel Dubost himself for two years. He taught at the Paris Conservatory for many years and no one individual can represent an entire school. Yet the fact that he taught at the Paris Conservatory makes him as much of an ambassador for the French school of flute playing as any one single person can be. But that's why I mentioned I did also study with other French players and I've kept many, many French connections with teachers and players. That's part of what I do professionally is go and play and work in France during the summers quite often. What I learned from the French school is to tongue as a default behind my teeth, either tu or du. 
Two is aspirated, do is not, so they're slightly different. I talk about that in another episode too, the best double tonguing exercise. But one interesting thing about the French School of Articulation is that it's varied. There's not one right articulation that you do all the time. You don't want to do what happened with me where teachers told me how to articulate and then they thought that I had it and then they never talked about it again. Even though I love those teachers and they did so many great things for me, we want to constantly be evaluating how we tongue. DeBose would tongue in front of his teeth for an extra aggressive or pingy attack. I like to use that forward pingy attack to start a phrase or to play isolated notes when I really need my sound to cut through. For instance, if I'm playing in an orchestra and there's a lot of noise around me, perhaps there's some brass or some percussion and my sound needs to compete and I need the audience to hear my entrance, then I will use that forward articulation to start a phrase. It's percussive, it helps to cut right through. But DeBost also would sometimes use a pa attack for very soft entrances. He would also sometimes use a finger attack. For instance, here's a place that I inherited from him that I use a finger attack. <laughs> to begin the scherzo from Mendelssohn's A Midsummer Night's Dream excerpt, he would occasionally also do an air attack. No finger, no tongue, just a good strong ha. That's another thing I learned from a different member of the French flute school is that they often will talk about articulation as not being just your tongue. It should be kind of a whole body experience to articulate, especially when you want good, strong articulations. This is an interesting reinforcement that how aggressively you articulate does not equate to how hard you tongue within your mouth. It equates to other things within your body, like where your tongue is placed and how you're using your air behind that tongue. Another thing that DeBose used to say about how and where to tongue is, I don't care how you do it. I care what it sounds like. He did not want to turn us into a bunch of little parrots doing exactly what he was doing. He wanted us to open our ears wide, listen. If you hear something sloppy, imprecise, unclear, lacking, fix it. After all that talk about different ways that we can do single tonguing, we come back to the efficiency and simplicity of using two, two, two as a default. Just like those beginning method books tell you. There's one more thing I want to say though, and that's about airstream. Keep in mind what I said about what makes us hear the articulation is when your tongue has sealed briefly against the roof of your mouth, most likely. And then when that seal breaks, we hear the articulation. However, we want to think a lot about our airstream. We don't want our tongue to affect our airstream. The tongue will initiate the airstream, but we want air pressure right behind it. And then we don't want to stop the airstream as we tongue. We don't want to think of spitting the air out like tuh, tuh, tuh. We want to think of a constant airstream and the tongue just interrupts it like this. And we just hear a good solid break in it due to our tongue sealing against the roof of our mouth. The image that I like the most to help students with this concept is to think of turning on the water in a tap. You turn it on and as flutists, we turn it on with a good articulation, Tuh. but then it is on. So then within that phrase, we keep our airstream constant. It's like you're letting the water run out of a tap and you just slip your finger through that stream of water. It goes all the way through, it completely disrupts the stream of water, but the stream of water itself is not affected. The tap is not going to start giving you the water differently just because your finger is going through that stream of water. Be sure that as you're articulating, you do not stop the airstream simply so that your tongue can move. But again, it's not enough to tell yourself or a student to say two, two without checking in on what's really happening. Because sometimes we think we're saying two, two, but we're actually saying something else like maybe thoo, thoo, thoo. We might even be anchoring the tip of our tongue behind our bottom teeth ta 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 and tonguing a couple centimeters back. I've even run into students who believe that they're using their tongue, but they're perpetually tonguing with their lips. Or they may even think they're using their tongue, but they're tonguing in their throat with their glottal stop. Even if you're using the tip of your tongue, be sure you're really using the tip. You're not using right behind the tip of your tongue. 
Also, be sure that you're not unnecessarily using too much of your tongue. I've had students who tongue with the tip of their tongue, but they also tongue right behind the tip. So they're just using too much of their tongue and the articulation ends up sounding a bit thuddy and thick. They need to focus on just using barely the tip of their tongue and letting the rest of their tongue stay out of the way and not come into contact with the roof of their mouth. So if you're in even the tiniest bit of doubt as to how you truly tongue, see just how alert and attentive you can be when you say tu, 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 tu. See what's going on with your airstream and be sure when you put your flute up to play, you do exactly the same thing. You don't switch and do something slightly different, but tell yourself that you're still saying two, 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 two.